I've tanked every new dungeon in Dragonflight and today would like to offer my beginner tanks this quick walkthrough and high level tanking guide for the final dungeon in the lineup, Alderman Legacy of Tia. I've tanked it on normal many times, on heroic a couple of times and once or twice on mythic zero. So I have a pretty damn good idea of how to best tank it. Before we begin, if you are new to tanking, we aren't going to go through the very basics of how to tank in general. Just go watch my recent video with the tips on tanking harder content. It might help you further. So let's jump straight in. Alderman Legacy of Tear is a good dungeon that we got exposed to quite early in the pre-patch to Dragonflight and now we are revisiting it over and over and over. Yep. This dungeon has linear layout with a couple of forks in the road, so to speak, that all lead the same way anyway, so you can't get lost or make your life particularly hard or easy if you choose a certain path over another. Not like Brackenhide Hollow. Mm, I hate that place. As you get into the dungeon, just go ahead, pull the trogs right in your way and do a very hard ride into the corridor if you want to skip one optional trash pack against the far wall in the nook there. As I always said to the beginner tanks, move at your own pace and don't pull everything until you're very certain that your DPS and heals can handle it. Uh, what you're seeing in the background is a, uh, well, now old footage from a normal dungeon, uh, which is why you see me not pay too much attention to how many trash mobs I take as a guardian druid, because I know they can't kill me or my group and I know that everyone is going to be fine, I'd like to call out very clearly that in Heroic or Mythic, in slightly less dominant gear, I strongly suggest that you would be a bit more mindful of your surroundings. A look at your map, at first especially, um, and move ahead through the corridors, pulling groups of trash as they stand in front of you, quite obviously. Sometimes I pull a group around the corner from the little hole in a wall leading to the very first boss. I pull them straight away just to kind of just save us the time to AOE everything, I guess. Sometimes I leave them for later, but in the end we have to retrace our steps and go that way anyway, so we will have to kill that group in any case. The hole in a wall leads you to a very clearly visible little appendix on your minimap. It's a little cave, a nook where the lost dwarves are. They are the first boss. Get aggro on all of them as a tank. Don't stand in the fire and dodge the fire barrage from their floating boat if they get to jump into it and fly around over you. That is if your uber DPS didn't blast them before that phase began. They appear to have very loose, if any, aggro table, which makes tanking and keeping their attention as a tank quite hard and probably very annoying on higher difficulties. But generally I never had any issues with this boss. Get them to low health and they become your friends, helping you a little bit through the rest of the dungeon. Now you retrace your steps back to the corridor that you came from, turn the corner and clear some more trogs and basilisks before you engage with the second boss, Trog Bromash. Bromash or Bromac is not bad, quite fun actually. Boss, he will summon adds that will run around, try to attack your group, so you should try and get their attention and group them up, I suppose, but that's not a massive issue. I don't think they do too much damage. He summons a totem, though, that does nasty things. So that big totem is a priority for you, so you need to tank the adds and the boss on top of the totem, just pull them there, um, while you kill the totem, prioritize the totem. Once it's down, the totem knocks down and stuns the boss, which becomes obviously more important in higher difficulties, where you cannot simply get rid of the boss too quickly, ignoring the totem. So, it's the fun part where, where you continue kicking him while he's down. It's quite naughty, by the way. After the second boss, you open the doors and keep going, dealing with some stone dwarves now and variety of custodian mobs who shouldn't be a problem at all either. Stay on the straight line as you go through the final room before the boss chamber. Uh, you will see those two groups of earthen weavers on each side of that little path that leads you to the boss chamber. If you stay down the middle and don't aggro them on the left or on the right, they will not aggro you and you can safely skip them. 
Knucklehead Dwarf will break the column, open the door to the Sentinel Talondra's boss for you, where you will fight him. From the tanking perspective, Sentinel Talondra's doesn't do anything super exciting at all, other than an inconsequential stomp knockback and spawning of some AoE orbs on the ground that I would avoid. Then she starts charging Ancient Dynamo, and apparently could uh, you could stun her there to interrupt that charge, but all my groups ignored that so far, even on Mythic, I think, if I'm not mistaken now, and just tried to blast her ASAP, which we succeeded at. She also casts Titanic Empowerment spell when she gets low on life, and while on normal she doesn't often get the chance to finish off the cast, she might on Heroic and Mythic. And when that happens, I've seen that happen a couple of times, her damage increases by 50%, if I'm not mistaken right now, um, and that is guaranteed to hurt in Mythic Plus keys. More corridors ahead, full of earthen custodian trash mobs, nothing too challenging, and the first fork in the road with a little Greek bath or swimming pool separating the two possible paths to the left and to the right. You can take either, I usually take the left, I've seen tanks take right, and it doesn't really matter as they both curve around kind of thing those paths and they take you to the same place on your way here uh, while you're still fighting trash the only important high damage trash mob to look out for is the larger runic protector golem who leaves aoe patches on the ground that you need to dance around and what i do as a tank i basically back away from them as standing in them would do a lot of damage quite quickly the corridor ends at another cave with some spiders and bats spiders leave a poison debuff on you and bats silence your casters including the healer so be mindful if you're not confident in sustaining the damage by yourself and in your tanking or dps of the group in normal, all of this is negligible, so, um, you know, less so in Mythic Plus. Once you pass the cave, you enter the fourth boss's chamber, and the boss is called Emberon. Emberon has little helpers on the sides of the room, who shoot slow fireballs uh, that you obviously should avoid, and he also does some fire little cone AoE on you, knock back, so best tank him fa facing away from the group. The only mechanic worthy of mention here is not something you can see in normal because we blasted him pretty quickly, but it's the phase when you he kind of shields himself, he gets into the middle of the room and summons a rotating fire laser, starts channeling a fire kind of laser beam that slowly goes around the room. You need to run around the room and kill those three smaller helper channelers who are holding his shield before he becomes vulnerable again, yeah, preferably while obviously running ahead of that fire beam and not getting hit by it. The path ahead has more stone dwarves and some golems, where larger dwarves in the patrols, they also have an ability that where they summon a protective shield that protects themselves and their allies and damages you. Watch that damage, because you do start noticing it. Yeah, on normal not so much, but on higher difficulties you will. On mythic you probably want to wait until the shield falls off, or just pull and tank the smaller adds outside the shield. Chrono Lord Deus is the final boss and he will appear at one point and freeze you in time while giving you some speech and making us all wonder why didn't he just kill you there and then if he can just freeze you like that. But, oh well. The final stretch is full of infinite agent dragonkin and more annoying infinite time keepers. Uh, I think that they are the mobs that leave a relatively nasty debuff on you, so do watch that and kill them, you know, as quickly as you can so that that debuff doesn't climb too highly. It's a straight corridor down to the final boss and the last big room in front of the boss chamber is full of infinite time reavers, again dragonkin, and whelps. They don't need to be pulled all at once, so if you're not super confident, just steer to one side of the room, like right side for example, and pull them in smaller groups, first whelps perhaps, then those dragonkin. Uh, in normal, I just grab everything. So, again, your mileage will vary, depends on capabilities of your group and how confident you are in, in your tanking ability and how high your own item level is. The boss himself is not too challenging, but basically there'll be a lot of time sandy AoE on the ground that you obviously don't want to stand in, just avoid it. Hopefully your DPS will blast the boss uh, fast enough before this AoE is literally everywhere. Um, 
And the boss is also casting a spell called Borrowed Time, which I can honestly never spot exactly what it does. So I'm going to assume that it heals him if he stands in the sandy AoE, perhaps? I'm sure someone will correct me in the comments down below. And I genuinely always welcome input, as long as you're not a troll, as I never pretend to be an expert. All in all, Legacy of Tear is one of my favorite dungeons, actually, funnily enough, in Dragonflight. Probably top three. I would give it a third place if I had to rank them. I like how linear it is and kind of how familiar I am with it. This is good testing ground for new tank classes that I blow the dust off periodically. I hope you did enjoy this little guide and it helps you take your tanking to the next level. Please like the video so that I know that I'm doing something right and that you enjoyed it. And subscribe for more. The Vault of Incarnates LFR opens next week and we absolutely are going to be reviewing all the bosses in it. And I will talk to you then next time. See you later. Bye for now. <laughs>